Oh man, you guys are not gonna believe this. I just scored the best score ever. I was browsing Instagram and got a DM from somebody that's offering really great prices on ammunition here in 2020. And he also told me he has X sappy plates. We've been trying to get those on our channel forever to test. Hold on a second, I gotta complete this transaction with him. He only accepts Venmo, which is pretty weird, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and trust him anyways. Uh, payment has been sent. Awesome, he's gonna ship them USPS. I should hopefully have those in a couple of days. Cool, he gave me tracking information. His English really isn't the best, but I think I can look past that. I, I make spelling and pronunciation mistakes all the time. Cool, I can't wait to get these. Three weeks later. Awesome, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Guess what, everybody? We just got those x sappy plates in. We've been waiting a long time for these going back and forth with that guy every day. He doesn't speak the greatest English, but I totally trusted him, paid him with Venmo. These ought to be great. We're gonna finally test x sappy against M993. What, what's wrong with the X on here? Is it paint? What is this? Wait, it's mustard. These aren't x sappy plates. I've been had. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the King of Armor Destruction. 2020 has been crazy. It's brought a lot of interesting things to our channel to test this year, especially in the way of body armor. Our last video, we tested a military issue Ceridine e Sappy Rev E against a bunch of our standard level four threats. So I said I would do a follow-up video with the second plate that we have right here and we would test M993 AP, which is the tungsten core armor piercing round in 762 NATO. Our testing is gonna be pretty straightforward today. I try to stick to some constants so that when we're testing other panels, we can have a little bit of crossover and data validity here. We test at 45 feet, which is the NIJ testing distance. I always try to test at zero degrees because that is the worst possible shot for the armor and the best possible chance for me to penetrate the armor. We use a compressible clay in our briefcase behind here, just mainly as a good backstop for this to sit against. And when it's about 75 to 80 degrees outside, we get a good representation of what back face is gonna be if the plate stops it. Right now it's about 40 degrees outside today, so the back face is gonna be a lot shallower than what it should be. We also drop test our ceramic strike faces on their face two times, again, per the NIJ standard. We use our Pro Chrono Digital whenever possible so we get a velocity number. If we don't get one off of a shot, I try to take one off camera just so we have a, a good number for testing on that day. As I mentioned, we are going to use M993AP. It's a 130 grain tungsten core projectile. We are gonna start with the 12 and a half inch SBR, then go to the 16 and then the 22. These are not rated for this round in any way, shape, or form. That's what x sappy is for. So that's why we're gonna start with the shortest barrel length. If we get a penetration on the 16 inch, I think because we're only taking three shots, we have enough on this plate that maybe we'll throw a gel block behind the plate and see what kind of wound track we get after one of these rounds penetrates this plate. Okay, we have all of our goodies set up. We've got our plate on our briefcase at 45 feet. Got the chrono and multiple cameras going. We're gonna take a shot with the 12 and a half inch SBR, go to the 16, and if it doesn't penetrate on the 16, we'll go to the 22, and if it does on the 16, I think we'll throw a piece of clear ballistics gel behind it and see what we get. We'll use our M993 AP. This is a 130 grain tungsten core projectile. It is the current AP round for the US military and probably other militaries as well. Probably go for the upper left of the plate. Velocity 2612. We are actually center of mass on that shot. A 
And now we'll grab our 16 inch. This is a CZ 557. Got the Yankee Hill Phantom M2 on there. Very nice heavy barrel on this gun. $27.98. We'll walk down and see what we did. I apologize in advance about the wind. This is actually day two. We did the intro for this test yesterday and then it got too late. Here was our 12 and a half inch shot. Here was our 16. We are about five inches away from each other. So those are fair hits. Place comments below. Place your bets, folks. Uh oh, raggy penetration. Stop the 12 and a half inch, although I kind of feel a really hard spot there, so I wonder how far it made it. Here is part of the bullet jacket in our soft armor there. And there is our penetration. Let's see if I can get it in the right spot. There is our penetration right there. We go all the way through the clay. I'm guessing that is the tungsten core. So I guess it will be a valid test to throw a clear ballistics gel block behind this and see how far it will go after penetrating this piece of armor. Since our 16 inch penetrated our plate, I've stacked a couple 10% clear ballistics gel blocks behind them, kind of crude on how I've got the plate set up there but it should do for our test hopefully we can capture this guy in our gel velocity 27.92 and i think i was a little low So right there is our penetration from the 16 inch gel shot. Not surprising that it penetrated. My crude method of attaching it seemed to have done the trick. Our wound track right here on the bottom is from our M993. It kind of intermingled with a prior testing, but I just wanted to see what it was gonna do. Got a little bit of fragmentation going right from the beginning. And then what you see right here is two separate root two separate wound tracks going on. This guy down here, he hits the bottom, he bounces off, and you see this straight line, this little tiny guy, up through 32 inches of clay, uh, gel. And right there, we left our clay briefcase behind, is that tungsten core. It did not penetrate the backside, at least from what I can see, but maybe it did. I need to replace this backer again. But interesting, I'll see if I can find maybe the jacket fragment or something in there. And All right, I got two more threats for you guys because we might as well just use this plate up while it's nice outside. These are both 308 threats, 762 NATO. This guy right here is labeled New Lennox, 152 grain tungsten core. They were from CDVS a while ago. I think they were labeled as M993 surrogates. I'm not sure what that means but we've tested these in the past against level four and I do believe the RMA 1189 plate stopped this out of the 22 inch. This guy right here, I don't know much about other than it's Hurtenberger AP. We'll have to see if Kevin Gross or somebody has a cross section of it to do a picture in picture. I'm not even sure how much it weighs. We'll shoot the new Lennox first. We should have a couple good spots left on this plate. We'll use the 16 inch. Pretty good velocity, 2607. And that was pretty much right where I wanted to shoot. Now we'll try the Hurtenberger.
2566, so probably right around 150 grains. We'll go see what we did. All right, here was our new Lennox, and here was our Hurtenberger all the way down there. I actually see the core in there, so I'll try to dig that out when we're done. But place your bets in the comments below, folks. Uh oh, Raggy. Got a penetration on the new Lennox, but on our Hurtenberger, there is just a nice little golf ball dimple there. It stopped it. Here is our soft 3A backer since the level four, e, or sorry, the ESAPI plates are in, in conjunction with plate. There is the new Lennox. Look at this, guys. No penetration past this. There's our dimple there. Wow, impressive. So the new Lennox was able to penetrate this East Sappy plate in the 16 inch, but it slowed down and degraded enough that our 3A backer here, this is just some Botac Battle Steel uh, Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, was able to stop that. Very interesting. Well, folks, I hope you were as excited as I was to see these results of our eSAPI against our advanced AP threats in 308. Previously, we've been able to defeat M993 with a alumina oxide plate. Typically, they employ a thicker ceramic strike face, so once you degrade that tungsten penetrator enough, then it can slow down and then the polyethylene behind it will catch it. Our 12 and a half inch was stopped with our eSAPI, but our 16, both times we tested it, even against the gel, it penetrated. Our new Lennox round was interesting. We've stopped that with level four too. It penetrated this plate, but because this is an in conjunction with plate, there's less polyethylene behind it, so that's why we put the backer on. Most of it stopped in the backer. So I guess I would be reason to believe if this were a thicker plate, it probably would stop it or one of the newer revision eSAPIs as well. As our video comes to a close, I always like to take a moment to thank all those that helped make that possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is SOF gear you want for having these eSAPI plates available for us to purchase. If anyone ever comes across X sappies for sale, definitely let me know. My little skit at the beginning was not in reference to him, but some of the other scammers online on Instagram and Facebook trying to sell you thousands of rounds of ammunition for dirt cheap prices and only accepting one-way payment methods such as Zelly or Venmo. Always be cautious. And of course, number three is you all for watching. I'm gonna have me a banana Laffy Taffy, and until next time, folks, I'll catch you at the range. Where's the where's the volume switcher on these? Um against some of our more advanced AP threats, including Got ceramic in my eyes. The goggles, they do nothing.